Hi, it's Revy from Axon Tutoring, and today I want to tell you a little bit about the intuition on quasi-linear utility functions. So quasi-linear utility functions are a very common utility functional form that it's often seen in economic modeling. And if you're doing micro uh, at a second, second year, for example, uh, you will see this. So the, the plan is to first tell you the nature of the function, give you a visual representation that I haven't really seen anywhere else, and then structure of the Marshallian demands. So what's the nature of the function? When do we have a quasi-linear utility function in two variables? Well, you have a utility function and this utility function will depend on some linear part of the X plus some non-linear part. So we're gonna have some V function here of the Y. And what makes this a quasi-linear the only requirement for this to be quasi-linear is that this V function is a concave function. So it's quasi-linear because it looks like almost linear. So if we think a little bit about what this means, it's really telling us that the part, the utility contribution of X uh, is itself independent of the Y and vice versa. Okay. Because this is a concave function, it must be that the slope of that concave function, if you were to, if I were to give you a concave function, so what would be a, a potential for V? Well, it would be something like Y to the power of alpha, where alpha is something that it's less than one, right? So let's say something between zero and, and one. Right? Um, and that would be your, that would be that, that, that functional form there, right? Um, well, the, the main thing to realize, for example, the square root of Y, it's a, uh, the square root of Y is a, a concave function. And if I were to graph it here, so y to the power of alpha, and I could have, to make it more, I could have just given you the square root function here. So you had y here, you have v of y here. One thing to realize is that the slope here, as you get very close to zero, it's infinity. Right? And the slope um, gets closer and closer to zero. But that slope is exactly the marginal utility. So when you look at the marginal utility of, say, x in a quasi-linear utility function, it doesn't matter the structural form of v, this drops out, so you're just left with this a. If you look at the marginal utility of y, well, you're just left with the derivative of this v function, which is a concave function. So now that we have, we know the nature of the function, when is something a, uh, a quasi-linear utility function, I can then go on to give you a visual to get a sense of what's gonna be the optimal, optimal solution um, for this. And just a little bit of a question to check your understanding. Um, is this a quasi-linear utility function? 3x plus y to the power of two. So take a moment um, to, to guess that. And what your answer should be is that, no, this is not quasi-linear because this part here is not a concave function, it's a convex function. So let's move to the second part of what I want to tell you. I want to really give you a visual presentation and really just build the intuition here. So I'm not going to solve any Lagrangians or anything of that sort, but I want to just give you an example and say, let's say that the um, quasi-linear utility function is 3x plus square root of y. Okay, I can do that. Right. Um, and what, what I would then also know is that the marginal utility of X is just three. The marginal utility of Y, well, this will be, be equal to uh, a half square root of Y. So it's just a derivative, a partial derivative of that. Um, if you have trouble with that, you might wanna check out that, that quick, you might refresh your memory on, on derivatives. Um, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to overload this graph a little bit. So I'm going to say in the x-axis, I just have the amount of x and the amount of y. And in the y-axis, I am graphing the marginal utility of y and the marginal utility of x. And I'm going to try and be consistent with the colors. So if I look at the marginal utility of x, well, that's just three. So it's going to always look like this of x. And if I look at the marginal utility of y, 
quadratic inequality of y. Well, I'm going to have to graph this function here. As y is very small, as y is very small, this function will become very, very large. Actually, it will tend to infinity. And as y becomes really, really large, this function will tend to zero. So I can sketch this without doing too much work, and it can look something like this. Okay. Now, when you are in consumer theory, generally, you will be given a utility function, but you'd also be given a constraint such that you might say subject to px times x plus py times y is equal to some level of income, right? And I also want to make my problem a little bit easier on me so because I'm building intuition here. So I'm going to say the price of x is one. I'm going to say the price of y is also one. So the prices are really the same and you have certain level of income and now you're deciding now you're deciding what do you want to consume, right? Well, think about this. Here we have marginal utilities. So if you have, if you're deciding where to spend your first unit of income, well, it's very clear that the marginal utility from Y is going to be a lot larger than the marginal utility from X. And because the prices are the same, I've put the prices one and one, you can just compare those marginal utilities, right? So initially, let's say that you buy a little bit of, you buy a little bit of y, so you're here, right, at y is zero, and now you say, what do I do with my extra income, right, do I spend it on y or do I spend it on x? Well, the marginal utility of y is still higher than x, which means that all the way up until here, this is going to be your y max. That's the most um, that you'd want to, that you'd want to spend on, uh, on y. And why is that the most? Because the moment you reach there, now you're making the decision, do I want to spend my extra income on Y or do I want to spend my extra income on X? Well, that decision is, is actually quite easy because you want to spend it on X. Okay, so you're going to start building up a little bit on X. And the moment that you can see this picture, this marginal utilities and the decision of where to spend the extra income, and remember, I've made things a little bit easier here because I've put prices to be the same and I put prices to be one. So this allows me to just compare the, the margin utilities on this. Um, so if I wanted to then give a structure of the demand, of the Marshallian demand, let's say if I just kind of go here and I say, what's the structure of the Marshallian demand? Um, well, the structure of Marshallian demand would be that if you have enough income to, to support Y max, then you should definitely buy Y max and spend all the residual income on X. If you don't have enough income to buy Y max, then you will be in what's known as a corner solution where you'd only spend Y max. So what's gonna be the structure of the Marshallian? Well, the optimal level of Y is gonna be equal to M over, over one in this case, if, m over one is less than y star or y max in this case. So if you cannot afford y max, then you're gonna spend all your income on this. And if you can afford y max, then it's gonna be y max. If m over one is greater than y max. And what's gonna be the structure for the x star? So the x star is the linear part, you could, you would, these conditions are going to be the same here. So I could copy them and bring them here. Um, and if you don't have enough income to support Y max, well, then, then you're going to get zero units of X. X is not, doesn't contribute enough to the utility for you, for you to get it. And if your M is greater than Y max, then you're going to spend the residual income. So M minus one times y max, this is how much you would spend to buy that y max, this is your residual income, and this you would spend it on x, and the price of x is one. And that's sort of like the structure of the Marshallian demand. Um, this is just here to build intuition. Of course, I've taken a very easy situation where the prices are one, so things get really, really easy in this situation. If prices are different, you will see prices kind of entering in this if conditions here. Um, but in this video, I wanted to just build a bit of the intuition. So next time you see a quasi-linear utility function, you are able to quickly identify and say this is not quasi-linear versus this would be quasi-linear if y is uh, 
between if, if that alpha is between zero and one, you can have a visual representation. So you can immediately think of this, you know, at the margin, where do I want to spend money? And finally, you can see a structure of the Marshall in demand. I hope this is helpful. I'll see you in the next video.